Okay, uh, electrical overview inside uh, this Riello monoblock. So, um, bringing in the power through the side of the chassis on this one, it has rubber grommets there. You must keep the high power and low power cables 50 millimeters away from each other. Um, these are then passing up through the bottom here from the lower part of the chassis into these uh, cable clamps here. And your incoming power here as well will be brought in. So this is where your main electrical feed is brought into this terminal block here. Um, if we also just identify a couple of things while we're here, um, these dip switches here, depending on whether you go for bivalent or a cascaded unit and some other functions, you may need to refer to that, but that could also be set for you on commissioning by your commissioning engineer if you're unsure about which ones to use there. Um, the domestic hot water thermostat that comes with the unit, the blue cable, um, this is fitted into the dry pocket of the cylinder, brought back here to the unit, and then there is a black cable, which is this cable here, which is lying down in the chassis, and you just need to plug the blue cable into that. If you haven't got your cable with you, you can use one mil normal twin uh, cable there, uh, and then attach these plugs at the end uh, once you receive the, the actual uh, the mister with the unit. Um, and this LED uh, here is just telling you which function or if there is any faults with the unit at the current time. So now we've moved to the bottom of the PCB with our terminal blocks. Uh, these are marked on your uh, drawings from res, so you'll have a schematic and it'll, at the bottom of the schematic it will show you the table which uh, references which items you'll be bringing to which terminals. Uh, on that table it will say which actual terminal block it refers to first of all and then which numbered terminal on that block. So this is the initial uh, terminal block CN11. So this will be where you'll be bringing in your heating controls, uh, your immersion switching, so most of the switching is done through the terminal blocks on this section. This is CN7, which we won't be using at this point, and this is CN30, which is all the terminals for your Cat5 cable for your user interface. Uh, so if we go to a couple of the examples on here, uh, your heating demand, for example, will be brought in on uh, CN11, 3 and 15, so here and here these two items here. So that is where your um, bolt free heating demand we brought into. Um, if we look to terminals uh, 13 and 16, they're marked for the immersion contactors. Uh, with the Riello unit, uh, you will not be able to power an immersion from the contactors here. They are merely a signal to bring in a localized supply that is back near the immersion. So uh, just for reference, you'd need a small um, contactor that's rated for say the immersion would be 20 amp contactor. So uh, the terminals from here would go back, close the contactor, the contactor would on the other side would have a localized supply of um, a 16 amp supply to power the immersion. So that closed contactor would bring in that power for the immersion. And it's the same for anything. There's a secondary return pump on here as well. This unit will not power the secondary return pump from here. It's just to close a localized contactor, which brings in localized supply to that secondary return pump. Okay, so uh, just a quick overview of the contents of the heat pump. Um, so if we start from this side, we've got your compressor here with the associated uh, fridge pipe work from that. Uh, you've got your four-way valve, which is just that there. Um, associated PCBs for the fan and compressor. Don't really need to worry about those. That's more on the system side of things. Um, if, as we move over, this is where you're going to have things you recognize a little bit more, more interaction with. So um, there's your heat exchanger here. Um, your incoming main, the electrics. Uh, all of your terminals for your control wiring, your terminal for the uh, user interface, 
Um, you've got your pump on the hydraulic side here. And then if we go up and into the top of the heat pump, you'll see where the um, automatic air vent is located and also the expansion vessel to the rear of the chassis, which we'll do a different shot of now. Um, if, once you get the unit, you will have to actually access this little AAV here. It comes closed. So when you're filling the system, you will need to open up that little AAV. There's a flow sensor under this polystyrene bit of insulation here. And this is where your expansion vessel is sat underneath this insulation here. Um, it does have the Schrader valve to be able to check the pressures, um, but unfortunately it is behind this bracket, so you will need to undo this metal bracket to get to the Schrader valve to check your uh, static pressure on that. Once we've got the top off, we might as well look at the rest of the components of the heat pump. So here we have the main evaporator core that's going to, wear, it's going to be absorbing all of your heat from the external air, and the fan here. Uh, and the fan motor itself built on this chassis inside. 